we want to learn about our first measure of dispersion, okay, spread, and the first one is the easiest one to find, which is range. Now, range has a very simple formula. It is the maximum minus the minimum, right there. That's your formula. Simple as that. So you take your max minus your min. Now, some textbooks will write them in words. They'll say from 2 to 19, um, whereas others will actually just give the number. And our textbook is the latter. We'll just give the number. It's the distance between the highest and lowest values. All right, so we are going to find the mean and the range, capital R, for the following data sets. So we actually have two data sets here. We have an algebra exam and a stats exam. Um, I'll highlight them so you can kind of see the difference. Okay, so the algebra exam is here, which down below, if you look at the dot plot, these are the values, right, for the algebra exam. Algebra exam's right here. This is two dot plots at once. And then the stats exam, I'll do in yellow, is right here. There we have it. Okay, so I want StatCrunch to actually find me the mean and the range. I'm actually going to have it do it for both of these because I want you to learn how to do that. Okay, so let me go to StatCrunch. And then in StatCrunch, I actually have this data set loaded. So if you go to data sets, and then you just type uh, ALG, algebra, hyphen STAT. There it is, algebra stats exam. <laughs> this is the title for it. So if you look that title up, you'll find it. There it is. And I'll, I'll try to put it in the notes for future. All right, so there we have the algebra exam. Those are the same values listed. There's the stats exam. And now I want it to find the mean. And remember what I said previously, which is to find things in this chapter generally, not always, but generally we're going to stat, summary stat, columns. So you don't click. You just let your mouse kind of hover. Stat, summary stat, columns, and you click. And then I'm going to tell it both of these things. So if I hold my control and click, or if I hit shift to click, it will select both of them, both the algebra exam and the stats exam. And I want the mean, which is right here. So I click on mean. That's the statistic I'm looking for. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and there's the range right there. So remember, we hit, we hold down our control button and hit click. Right, control click will get us the range, and that keeps those two values, and just those two values. And now I'm going to select compute down here in the bottom, and there they are. I can see that the algebra exam is indeed 74 and 40, just like is written on the paper. But now I can also see that the statistics exam is also 74 and 40. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if Alana did that on purpose. And the answer is yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> so the mean is 74. Um, by the way, the unit on this is probably points. As a matter of fact, I said oop, right here at the top. The unit is points. So if you want to put PTS to stand for points after both of these, 40 points, right? So there's the range. There's the mean. There's the mean. And the range is also 40 points. And you can see it on this graph. I mean, let's label these values. OK, so remember what the mean is. The mean is the fulcrum point, the balance point. So this is a dot plot. This is an x-axis, a number line, if you will, that's got tick marks on it. So that's 70, 71, 72, 73, 74. So 74 is that bit right there. So we make the tippy top of my triangle be right there. That's the mean, which is 74. It's the balance point. And it's that way for both graphs. So the balance point for this graph up here is the same spot, 74. The range is the distance from the lowest value up to the highest value, which both of these had a person scoring 100 and a person scoring 60. So the range is 40 points. All right. So now the question comes, which class would you rather be a student in and why? And I actually get a couple different answers from this usually in a class. So there are some students that want to be in the algebra class and there are some students that want to be in the statistics class. So a conservative student, conservative, um, 
meaning a student that doesn't want to take risks. A student that wants to be sure that they pass, that's all they want is to pass, is more likely to choose the algebra class. because look at these scores, almost everybody passed, right? It has a lot of consistency. Right, almost everybody passes. And by the way, these are not real numbers. <laughs> I made these up. This is not a real data set at all. But it's illustrative of things that do happen in deal real data sets, right? It shows you that. Now, if you're a, a risk taker student, right? If you are willing to take risks, if you're willing to gamble, they want the statistics class because it has high rewards, but also the possibility of failure. There's a lot more students failing right here, right? So they, but, but, they have a 90 and they have an 85, right? So they've got a chance at scoring a higher value, right? So the statistics class has a better chance. But it's chance, that's why it's a risk, right? Of a high score. High risk and high reward. There's the reward, there's 85 and the 90 and the 76, but there's the risk, which is all these 61s and 62s and 64s over here. Right? Upon this, many casinos have been built. <laughs> all right, the top game is not a game a casino would bother with. <laughs> right, the bottom one, Right, if you were gambling, right, you would gamble on this bottom because, right, there's payouts, but then there's losses. Okay, now, how useful were the mean and the range for comparing these data sets? And that's the key, right? Mean and range are fine, right? They tell you something about the data set, but how useful are they for comparing these two data sets to each other? And the answer is not useful at all, right? If all you looked at was the, if all you saw was the mean and the range, you'd think that they were identical, but they're not. Look at the way the spread is, right? So mean and range on their own are not useful. Because um, if we only had those values, okay, if we only saw those values, we would think the data sets th are the same, but they are not. And this kind of exposes something. It's honestly true about all the values in this chapter. We're going to learn a whole bunch. So we've learned mean, median, mode. Now we've learned range. So, so far we've learned four ways to numerically summarize a data set. And in general, it's true that one of those values on their own is not always that useful. You want the values in tandem with other values. That's how you numerically summarize a data set to remember the name for the chapter. Right? The chapter three is about numerically summarizing data. These values on their own are often not useful. The mean is one of the most powerful values we have, but even the mean can fall flat on its face sometimes. We need more information. In this particular case, these data sets have a spread and we need a way to measure that, right? And the mean and the range are not cutting it, right? Um, spread, aka dispersion. I'll just put that above 
dispersion. Right, that's how disperse is it, right? Spread, aka dispersion. And we need a number. that will measure that for us. Um, well, range does measure spread, but we need a more refined measure, <laughs> I guess I should say. We need a better number, a better number that will measure spread than range. Right? Range does measure spread. It measures from lowest to highest, but we need a better one. And that better measure of spread, which is coming for us, is called the standard deviation. There's another one coming as well called the IQR, but that won't come until section 3.4. So I should say better measures of spread. Um, we're going to learn about standard deviation. That'll be the next page. Oop, deviation. With standard deviation comes something called variance. Variance. And we're also going to learn IQR, but we won't learn IQR until section 3.4. Before I leave this page behind, I want to make a note for those folks that are using the TI calculator. If you are not using the TI calculator, then you can just skip ahead to the next video. All right, TI calculator folks, the thing about the range is that unlike StatCrunch, the TI calculator does not calculate it. <laughs> so let me show you real quickly. Oh, I have to get my TI calculator up. One second. All right, here's the TI for us to look at. So I have the data put into stat edit. And then if I go to stat calculate one variable statistics, when I go to calculate, it finds the mean at the top, that's 74. That's the X with the bar on its head, right? That's the symbol for a mean, but it doesn't find the range. It does tell us min and max, however. So you can see that the min is 60 and the max is 100. And so if you're with a TI calculator, you should just make a note up here somewhere. Um, I'll just do it up here. So note um, TI calculators do not find this. Right, you'll have to find it by hand. Luckily, it's not a particularly difficult calculation. And the TI does find the max and the min, so that makes it really easy.